Okay, thank you very much. Hello everyone, thank you all for coming. Now, this is the chant class for uh, Asia Times. Um, so this is now Saturday in Asia, approximately. And it's afternoon here in California. But uh, thank you all for joining us. In the future, this might not be a bad idea for us to conduct online classes like this because it's impossible for me to divide myself uh, uh, more than this. Uh, because my goal in teaching you Chan is to transfer my knowledge to you. What kind of transfer of knowledge? The knowledge that uh, uh, through the certain teaching, this is what Chan is about, uh, that's how I understand it, and that you're able to uh, enter samadhi and open your wisdom so that Chan lives in all of you. It's not about me, it's, also, it's about you. So uh, now we're embarking on next, in, a, in an, our next phase of uh, teaching where we try to uh, teach as many as possible, to help as many of you as possible. So uh, if we were to have to continue the old model where we uh, build a temple and then we train people to guide you and so forth, it would take forever and it would be terribly inefficient. So I feel that online is really the way to go. Hmm? What do you think? I'm always looking forward to your solicit your input and your comments and your suggestions. But uh, so I hope that in the future, the more and more people will join us online because the key about Chan training is again, is about you. What does it take for you to improve? Uh, I received a recent, I heard a recent comment uh, of a person who says, wow, your Chan is like the elite of the elite. Uh, it's not uh, quite uh, the total picture. Chan as the way uh, that the Chinese uh, patriarchs taught it is for everyone. Okay, meaning that the Chan instructions, remember back then there's uh, um, uh, Chan Master Bai Chang or Chan Master uh, Wei, uh, Wei Yo, Ling Yo, or Chan Master Ma Zhu, and so forth, uh, the six patriarch. They taught a lot of people. They have thousands of disciples. And uh, as you can imagine, there are different levels. There are newcomers, old timers, and so forth. People are tur turning around. And therefore, when those uh, teachers taught so many people, so the instructions have to be uh, good for everyone involved. So the instructions have to be good for low levels as high as well as high levels. What the person who made a comment uh, is uh, is very good about is uh, uh, she can only see the uh, the uh, top part of it. She doesn't realize that chants also, instructions are also for low-level people. Why is that? Because that's what we've been doing. When I first started uh, years ago, the good students were at all the other temples. Okay? They have no business uh, showing, show, showing up at my temple or my uh, brother's living room. I started teaching and teaching about these people from uh, being scattered, to, to being quite advanced, you see? So uh, our Chan has to be able to accommodate that. We continue to do that for all of you, okay? So uh, it's not as uh, elitist uh, as you think. It's uh, for everyone, okay? Because uh, every one of you has trem tremendous potential don't look down upon yourself. You are the one who thinks uh, so lowly of yourself. I look at you and say, wow, there's so much that you can grow, so much you can achieve, so much you can uh, be, uh, so much more you can be. And it's just that you don't believe it. And that's why uh, the Chan instructions are designed to help you. Uh, if you follow the instructions and do what uh, uh, we 
talk about, then you will uh, improve. In fact, uh, recently, as recent as quite recently, uh, quite a few students uh, reach arhatship to uh, various levels, one, two, three, four, and so forth. You see, uh, that's usually a big deal for in Buddhism. But they started, actually, the students started, when they first started, they were pretty low. And some got there pretty quickly themselves. Okay? And I cannot, I won't tell you how, because otherwise uh, I cannot uh, plan to charge you new money in the future for such uh, secrets of the universe. Okay? But uh, if, you, if you can figure it out, you can save yourself a lot of money, too. Okay? So it's fair game. <laughs> when eventually I figure out how to monetize this, uh, I might tell you, or I might not. Uh, but uh, uh, it's, uh, it's available. I mean, you can figure it out. It's so simple. If I told you, say, oh, it's so simple, why can't you tell me? If I told you, then uh, you don't need me anymore. I can retire. Okay, it's not just that, it's just that it's a lot more involved than that, so I don't want to give you the impression it's, uh, it's uh, that easy, it's hard work, and it requires constancy, it requires uh, you passing a lot of tests, that's one of the things that uh, we do, uh, we throw a lot of tests at you. Many of you failed miserably, and therefore you were bumped out. Many of them were bumped out. Oh, those four losers. Ah, it's okay. <laughs> Not anyone, everyone can take it. Uh, from low level to high level, it's just the way it is. It is, okay? When your blessings run out, sayonara, okay? Better luck next time, okay? So, all right, so does anyone have any questions or comments? No? Okay, then no. there's so much to talk to you about uh, this uh, afternoon. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Guang Ho. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, 아, 질문이 있는데, 최근 그, 회사에서, 회사에서 간이 그, 간이 이제 헬스 센터가 있습니다. 자그마 헬스 센터인데, 거기서 제가 이제 그, 아침이나 저녁에 가끔 운동을 하다가 사람이 없을 때, 어, 절을 하는 걸 좋아해서 이제 절을 할 때가 있습니다. 근데 그, 속으로 이제 예불 자체문의 명호를 영하면서, 어, 절을 이제 조금씩은 하는데요. 근데 그 일반 도량이 아닌데 어 저를 그렇게 해도 될지를 문의를 드리고 싶습니다. 이게 첫 번째 질문이고요. 두 번째 질문은 이제 사무실에서 전에 잠깐 말씀드린 대로 이제 데뷔주를 하고 했었는데 최근에는 어 속으로 운영으로 능엄주를 할 때가 있습니다. 근데 능엄주 할 때면은 개인적으로 더 기운이 좀 세다 그래야 되나요? 어쨌든 좀뭐 기운이 좀 도는 게 느껴지는데 옛날 1, 2년 전에 마스터님 법문에서 능엄주를 어 이제 다른 일반 장소가 아닌 다른 곳에서 함부로 하는 건좀 삼가야 된다고 하시는 걸 들은 적이 있습니다. 근데 사무실에서 묵념으로 하는 것도 가끔 어 괜찮을지 여쭙고 싶습니다. 이렇게 두 가지 질문입니다. 고맙습니다. test. Master, I have two questions. The first question is at the workplace. Uh, there's a small gym place. So every morning and evening when there's no people, sometimes I bow, uh, reciting the Buddha's name. So is it okay to bow? It's not the temple, but it's in the workplace. Is it okay to bow in that, such a place? And the, my second question is that uh, sometimes I, at the workplace, I used to do, recite Great Compassion Mantra. But these days, uh, I recite the Shrangama Mantra in silence. 
So I heard a few years ago in your Dharma talk, you said do not recite the Shranka Mantra in other place. So is it okay to recite the Shranka Mantra at workplace? Okay, good questions. Number one, at the workplace is, uh, you can bow, of course, you can bow anywhere. The only problem with that is that people might judge you. People might think of you as some sort of cult, some sort of uh, um, confused person, radical person who bows, you know, like, uh, I don't know, maybe you're a Muslim or something, you know, this, the somehow because of uh, uh, the recent events, the Muslim believers, they bow everywhere, and they also kill a lot of people as well. So you may be associated with such people. So be careful, okay? Well, for me personally, uh, spiritual pursuit is very personal. I do not want people to know. I prefer people not to know, um, because it's none of their business. Because when you start ask, they start asking questions, they won't understand. Okay, and therefore, uh, I prefer to keep my spiritual practice very, very low-key. I don't let people know. Uh, even like when I recite the Buddha's name, I don't even use beats when I'm outside of the temple, because unless I'm trying to impress people. Okay, so very, very low-key is my style, and no one's supposed to know. Okay, and uh, that's uh, how you can do it longer, in my uh, opinion. Okay, so if you can bow, fine. But eventually, if someone will come and see you bowing, they start asking questions, or or they start uh, making spreading rumors and, and so forth. It's uh, not advisable to me. Okay, uh, I know there because your work schedule. That's the only time you have. Do something else. Don't draw attention to yourself. That's my advice. Okay, number two, uh, similar in the same vein, when you recite the Shranga Mantra, you draw a lot of attention as well from the ghosts. Because in the Shranga Mantra, there are some p portions where the very, where you actually attack the ghosts. Okay, and therefore when you recite them, uh, at times, the, some of the ghosts and the demons might be offended, okay, might be attacked, and it's not good for you. Who's going to protect you? Okay? So I would rather recite the Great Compassion Mantra. It's a lot safer. It's non-offensive to, to uh, the ghosts and the demons. Okay? So uh, if you recite the Shranga Mantra at all, actually, uh, I am a lot more cautious. For example, my masters, uh, temples, some of the monks, uh, they, said, they say, I want to teach you the Dharma from the Shranga Mantra because it's theoretically they're more powerful than the Wan Yin Dharma door and the Great Compassion uh, Mantra Dharma doors. It's true. Theoretically, it's true. Meaning that the Shranga Mantra uh, Dharma doors are more powerful. They're designed to conquer ghosts and demons. And therefore, yes, they, they are very, very powerful, more so than the Great Compassion Mantra. In theory, only I emphasize. Okay, uh, they are both more, no more than big hammers, and uh, the hammer size is in matters. However, also what also matters is the arm that wields the hammers. How strong the arm is. Okay, if your arm is not strong enough, you can wield a huge hammer, but it won't do any harm at all. It won't do any good for you. Whereas, if your arm is stronger, then you will, uh, if let's say you will the uh, Great Compassion Mantra, and you can do some, some good with that, versus you can't even lift the Great um, the, uh, the Shranga Mantra. So, in that case, resigning the Shranga Mantra is not that useful. Okay, so, to me, uh, this is the misconception of our secret school. That we people in the Chan school understand very clearly 
The secret school, for example, those secret people, secret school people, practitioners, say, I have a lot of mantras to recite, and I do this and do that, and I can do this and do that. It's on a theoretical level only, okay? Uh, but what they don't have is the strength. Chan is a building of your strength. That's the core of it. So in Mahayana, we start first by building your strength, and then teach you how to use various tools. Tools are like mantras, okay? So this is how we train our people, okay? We never lose sight of the fact that we first need to build your strength, your muscles, your, your legs, your arm has to be strong enough to be able to run, to be able to lift heavy things. Then you're given tools, uh, you're given sabers, you're given uh, uh, hammers, you're given drills, you're given tools to do your job more effectively. Wherever you are, at home, at work, wherever, okay? So the core of it is your strength, okay? And that's what the matter is with the, the thinking. Uh, the, the, the appeal is the appealing to your greed. They say, oh, this is very powerful and so forth. But and they, uh, don't, uh, they don't understand the process. The process is not just the tools. The process, uh, the, what matters first is your strength, your inner strength, how strong you are, okay? So for me to give you a hammer and you can't wield a hammer, you cannot use a hammer, then it's, the hammer is useless to you, okay? So, uh, so I would, uh, in our lineage, for you lay people, I strongly urge you to practice the great compassion, ment- the great compassion Dharma doors. You know, don't, follow, you know, don't follow the, you know, the people who try to appeal to your greed and say, oh, I will teach you the Shranga Mantra Dharma doors or such and such Dharma doors because they're most powerful and so forth. They're more powerful, they're more useful. That's baloney, okay? Those people don't know what they're talking about, okay? I want to look at those. Oh, all of you should ask yourself, am I strong enough to use these tools or not? And if you practice those mantras and you, in your mantra practice, your samadhi does not increase, then your practice leads to nowhere. You have a hammer that you cannot wield. A hammer you cannot use effectively is useless. Okay, whereas in our world, my emphasis has always been to help you increase your samadhi power first. Okay? And then uh, in your uh, meditation practice, we teach you mantras, we teach you many, many things, give you many, many tools in order for you to uh, complement the spiritual practice. Okay? Uh, I, this is what, uh, where we came from, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, great master Xinhua, that's what he, he did, but it wasn't explained to his disciples, it wasn't explained to me, it's, when, it's only after I had to start teaching myself per his uh, order, then uh, his suggestion, that's why I realized what I had to do to help you. So all this, uh, uh, I would not recommend that you lay people practice the Shranga Mantra Dhamma Door at all. It's too dangerous for you. You cannot handle it. Okay? It's like you, uh, you recite a mantra, and like, uh, let's say, you recite a mantra, and you go near a demon king, and you recite the mantra. It will offend the demon king for sure. And it's not going to be good for you. Who's going to protect you? Hmm? Okay. Let's, let's say the demon king happens to go by your workplace, Wang Ho. Okay. For some reason, he went there for maybe to uh, pick on someone. Okay. Uh, teach someone a lesson for messing with the demon kings. And you there, you happen to be reciting a great compassion mantra. And it affects him. You will offend him greatly. So who will turn his guns on you first? Who's going to protect you? Hmm? Okay? Yeah, so be careful. Uh, just do the great compassion uh, mantra and the four to hands and eyes. That's plenty good for you. Now, let me put it this way for you. Uh, 
unless you way, way up there, uh, the great compassion Dharma doors are plenty for the demons to be conquered. You don't even need the great compassion, I mean the Shranga mantra at all. Okay? It's not necessary. Uh, uh, because there are many things, more things uh, that uh, behind the scenes that you don't know about. So don't fall into that trap of uh, the teachers uh, appealing to your greed and say, I have this best thing here that you, know, you should do. Uh, that's baloney to me. Okay? They don't know what they're talking about. Okay? Because unlike you, I look at all those teachers, I see... You teach people the Great Compassion Mantra, you teach people, you know, the Shranga Mantra. I look first at you, I don't look at what uh, your tools are, I look at who you are, what's your strength. Okay? Uh, so, I'm not fooled by those things. It's, uh, it's uh, to uh, appeal to your greed. I frown upon that. For us uh, purists, uh, we frown upon such practices. Okay, and there's going back to this comment earlier about uh, Buddhism, you know, yes, uh, Buddhism, if the teachers is uh, not skilled enough, they will have to appeal to low-level people. For our world and our world and our Chan, we take care of all the full range. It's like you have to help people from a low level build a foundation, build better foundation and better and better foundations to, so that you can keep on uh, uh, building much higher, build a skyscraper. So it takes a kind of uh, technical knowledge okay, to be able to do that. Uh, whereas uh, it's just like you go to uh, education institution. Uh, the first ask is the um, first thing I ask is uh, what is your uh, what, how far do you go? Here in the U.S. we can go at uh, double A, you know, two years. Is it four years? Is it masters? Is it PhD? Is it postdoctorate? Okay, so that gives you the full range how far you can go on that program. Mm. Ours is no limit from zero to no limit. Okay, a lot higher than. Most of you can, okay, yeah. can go, okay. Um, all right. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Master, can I ask you uh, more about the uh, previous questions? Sure. Uh, uh, personally, as I said to you before, uh, I don't practice at my workplace gym. Uh, when people around me, when there are no people at the gym, so I used to uh, take a bow. So, uh, so people don't recognize me uh, to spiritual practice. So at this moment, uh, it doesn't matter to me, and I really keep it in my mind to your advice. Uh, your advice, and more of that, uh, I would like. I would like to ask you another question. Is it okay for me to recite Shranga Mantra at our temple? Yes. And, uh, and my home? Yes. Is it okay? Absolutely. Okay. Shranga Mantra you can recite at our way places, at your home, is okay. Okay. But don't go elsewhere and recite it. It could cause a lot of problems for yourself. Number two, what I didn't make it clear and I apologize is the fact that it's not so much that uh, uh, that you are trying to draw attention. It's just that one of these days, as you're bowing, someone uh, inadvertently walks in. Only, only take one person for the entire company to hear about it. And that's what you want to avoid. Okay? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, then uh, that rumor will never stop. Okay? So, so, it's not worth it to me. It's not worth it at all. I'm very low key. Whatever I do is none of your business. Okay? Yeah. All right. Anything else? Okay. Uh, it is uh, important uh, that uh, you, I need to stress to you, in the spirit of these two questions here, you don't. Uh, really have any clues as to how much protection you need for your spiritual practice. Okay. The spirits okay, is the base 
of life. You remember, you came to this world. How do you come to this world? Your spirits come first. It came, they came first. And in Buddhism, we call it consciousness. Your consciousness came first. And the Chan practice, the spiritual practice, is the one that hones your con- consciousness and turns that into wisdom. Okay? So we have the secret recipes to help deal with mold the consciousness of yours and turn it into something uh, that is uh, precious, that is in, you know, incredible value. Okay. So, uh, so that spiritual practice is a base of life. Okay. So this is why, how important it is. So it's no big deal. Once you know it is, then just follow the practice. You know, come and practice uh, once a week or whatever regularly. And you see the wonders will do for you. And the key here, I'll give you a tip. The key here is you have to listen to the Dharma talks. A lot of people erroneously just meditate and they, after they're done, they stand up and walk away. Uh-uh. Let me give you a tip. These instructions are here are much more important than you sit. Much, much more important because uh, they are part of the uh, Chinese Chan teaching, American Chan teaching is the instructions are much, much more uh, critical for your development, for your improvements. Okay? All right? Any other questions? Okay. Now, also, what's interesting about us for this particular class is that we are reaching back to the Asian culture. Okay? And then tomorrow here in the U.S., Saturday, we teach a, a class that's more geared towards their Western culture. So this class is more Asian culture. So in other words, we are hybrid. We need to bridge a gap. We need to put a bridge between Asian culture, which has depth. It has a track record of producing wisdom in all of you, all its practitioners, versus Western culture. Uh, no wisdom whatsoever. <laughs> they develop knowledge, they develop uh, uh, material progress, okay? But uh, it's a lack of wisdom, it's a lack of foundation. So that's why uh, we happen to be in a place where we can bridge the two. And that's the best of both worlds, if you will. Okay? And, and so, mm. so, uh, so, in fact, for this particular class, uh, I uh, stumbled on some of the teachings of uh, Master of the Great Chinese uh, Patriarchs. Uh, so uh, that's why we have some anecdotes from Master uh, Wei Shan. Uh, and uh, it's always amazing to me that uh, uh, to look at how they behave, what they thought, how they train the people, the students, and so, so forth. And so, uh, so I'd like to share them with you. And feel free to make comments and so forth. Don't be frightened. Yes, these are extremely, extremely wise people, way beyond my level, way beyond your level. But uh, by listening, by hearing what they do, what they think, what they say, uh, we plant incredible seeds for you, for me, okay, as well. And in in the, in, in the most humble way, I'm telling you, I'm, tra- I'm re- overreaching. I'm not sure I can explain to you what they mean, but I try my best. Okay? All right. So, so that's uh, recently found uh, one anecdote I uh, couldn't find on my uh, links. So can you do the uh, 1.5 uh, skill and function? Okay, uh, this is a this is a handful for me to be honest with you. So uh, uh, control your laughter. Okay, Master will make a fool of himself today. 
Okay, because it's this talk about Ma Zhu, talk about uh, Bai Chang, talk about Wei Shan, talk about Yang Shan, talk about Huang Bo. All the are way beyond my level. So what am I doing speaking about them? Uh, let's see how far we can go. How is that? Okay, so you might be find this uh, find this amusing. You see how master would struggle. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this is kind of cool. Well, I found it today, and I spent an hour going over it. And I said, "Oh my God, what am I doing? I don't even know what I'm, what I'm doing." So it's about great potential and great function. Da ji da yong. Okay. This is. Let me warn you. Uh, not something and Master Shri Nua even talked to his disciples. He didn't teach his disciples at all. I'm teaching you just how much I regard you. Hmm? I have so much hope for you. <laughs> and I know uh, many of you will surpass Master Shri Nua disciples. That's why I'm doing this. Okay? I know you will. So, here, listen to it, absorb it. Don't worry, don't try to understand too much. Okay? And that's what it takes. Exposure. Plant the seeds. That's what you need to do. And someday, they'll come out. They sprout. Whenever they're supposed to sprout, let them. But unless you plant the seeds now, unless I help you plant the seeds, it will never happen. Okay? These are the best seeds possible. Because you refer to these great teachers, the greatest teachers in our, in our history of Chan. Okay? So, let me go on quickly because I don't have a lot of time. Master Bai Chang, Master here refers to Master Wei Shan's master. Okay? Bai Chang is uh, Master Wei Shan's uh, uh, master. This is Ma Zhu, who was, uh, who was uh, Bai Chang's master. So it's like great grandmaster. Okay? I mean, grandmaster. So Ma Zhu is Master Wei Shan's grandmaster. So Master Bai Chang visited Ma Zhu again and stood beside Ma Zhu to attend to him. Okay, I had to go through by five times to correct the English uh, to make it more, of, uh, more understandable for people like uh, Shannon and so forth. Okay? Because otherwise they say, oh, you guys are so like Chinglish and Viet English or whatever. Okay? Uh, so, uh, all right, next. Uh, Zhu looked at the whist at the corner of the rope bed. And so back then, they don't have mattresses. They sleep on the rope, right? The bed's made of rope so that it can move, okay? Shift the weight. And so quickly, make quick comment. Master Shenhua taught us to sit, sleep. But you see, enlightened people didn't have that issues. Only us in the modern time had, it has problems. So have obstruction, that's why we're supposed to sit, sleep. But back then, these enlightened beings, these uh, practitioners, they don't have to worry about that. That could be you. Uh, next, uh, Master Bai, Bai Chang said, this is a function, one should be apart from function. Okay, so as Ma Zhu did something, Bai Chang immediately made a comment. Okay, this is how uh, this is how they relate to each other, okay? Master and pupil, uh, pay attention. Uh. And Mazu, the teacher said, uh, in the future, when you open your lips, what would you say? Uh, to open your lips refers to the fact that in order to teach these pupils, we need to talk to you, we need to speak Dharma to you. So that's why he said, open the lips. What would you say? Because remember, uh, uh, Master Ma Zhu taught Bai Chang by doing what? By saying nothing. Because Bai Chang is enlightened. Okay? And it's very high level. So Ma Zhu didn't have to say anything. He taught that way by looking. So far, so good? Okay. If you feel this is too much for you, I understand. Okay, don't feel bad. <laughs> okay, so, and Bai Chang, who got the message, got the message and said, okay, I will show you what I understand. 
So far, so good. Okay, next. So Zhu says, he said, okay, you're right. But in the future, how would you explain what I just taught you to your students who are not as good as you are, who are not as advanced as you are? So you need to open your mouth. You see that? What would you tell them? Is that clear? Uh, okay, don't worry. Uh, master, meaning ma Wei Shan's master, took the whisk and raised it up. So he took the whisk in a corner of the rope bed and lifted it up. And Zhu said, this is a function, one should be apart from function. So Ma Zhu threw it right back at Bai Chan. Okay? The same comment. Then Master Bai Chang hung the wish back to its original place. Okay, so this is how they related to each other. They don't talk. Okay, uh, he didn't talk. So this, so so Ma Zhu, you know, uh, reciprocated, gave him, made a comment. So so Bai Chang hung the wish back to its original place. And next, Ma Zhu shouted loudly with great might. Okay, wait up. I mean, he, the monks, when you know, they have, the accomplished monks have a certain level of weight, uh, meaning awesome virtue, okay? And it comes with their demeanor, with the looks and so forth. But here, Ma Zhu chose to shout loudly uh, to express his might and making Bai Chang deaf for three days. He couldn't hear anything for three days. So far, so good? It's not like I went to Korea and all the monks gave me tea and we talked and talked back and forth, back and forth. Here's how they talk to each other, okay? And they even shouted, okay? So far, so good? So that's the end of the interaction between Bai Chang and Ma Zhu, okay? One day, Master Bai Chang told the assembly, the Buddha Dharma is no small matter, meaning that uh, this is the Buddha Dharma, our knowledge, our wisdom is a huge, huge deal in the universe. Okay? It's nothing, nothing trivial at all. Uh, what we're doing, what we're discussing, what we're learning, what we're trying to understand, is no trivial matter at all. Mm. Uh, in the past, great master Ma Zhu shouted at me so loudly that I could not hear three days. What does it mean? That's how Ma Zhu chose to teach Bai Chang, the Buddha Dharma, by shouting at him. You get that? At their levels. He chose to shout, he chose to shout, he shouted. It's not like you say, Master, why are you so mean to me? What I do to you? You know? Ma Zhu, Ma Zhu shouted at Bai Chang and make him, you know, uh, go deaf for a few days, temporarily uh, deaf. Okay? Huang Bo, which is Bai Chang's uh, disciple, which is the same level as Wei Shan, okay? Uh, Bai Chang has two major disciples, Huang Bo, very famous, and Wei Shan, also very famous, okay? Huang Bo then later uh, taught Lin Ji, okay? Who then founded the, the Lin Ji school. All right? Hmm. So Huang Bo uh, heard this and unconsciously stuck out his tongue. Isn't it funny that the great masters, the great uh, terrifying masters, they behave so weird? You know, one shouted, no class at all, and one stuck his tongue out. Hmm? Bai Chang said, Huh, won't you be Machu's successor in the future? So Machu said, wow, you have potential. Maybe you should, you know, you, you qualify to be Machu's successor. 
Okay? Hmm. Successor of the Dharma, meaning to be his descendant. Bulls, Bull said, of course not. Uh, uh, of course not. Because of what the Master said today, I could see the functioning of Masu's great potential. Tuang Bo says, oh, okay. I see it, I understand. I know, you help me understand this principle of Chan is about great potential and great use. Great potential, great function. Okay? Uh, meaning, let me give you an idea, and this is what Master Shenhua never explained to us, to my generation at all, anywhere yet. Okay? Uh, Buddhism has two parts. Number one is your potential or, or what is your level, okay? What is your potential? Meaning that, uh, uh, let's put it simply, what is your samadhi level, okay? How far can you go? How far have you got? How far have you, how far your sky, uh, how tall your skyscraper, scraper? So far, so good? And the use, so that's the potential. So far, so good? It's your potential, your ability, your innate ability. What can you do? Okay, what is your potential? Okay, what are you capable of? Your capabilities. And it's function or function or use. Meaning, if you have that potential, what are you using, are you using it for? How do you apply your potential? Okay? For example, your potential could be your intellect, your smarts. And how you apply your smarts? You choose to be a lawyer, you choose to be a professor, you choose to be a um, doctor, you choose to be a business person, and so forth. That's function of your potential. So far, so good. The time training is the harnessing, the building, development of your potential. Is that clear? Once you have that potential, then you're able to do things at your level. So a person at higher level than you will be able to accomplish more doing the same thing. Is that clear? So that's why each potential has its corresponding use. The Chan here we're teaching you only is for this developing your potential. You have to choose yourself how you're going to use your potential at home, at work. Is that clear? So that's a big picture for you. Chan is not something you say, okay, cross your legs and, and so forth. No, all those are secret practices to help you develop potential, okay? And also, at the same time, in our world, in American Chan, help you uh, apply it. Because actually, you cannot simply develop functional uh, uh, potential alone. You also need to apply the function so that you can go higher by using your current potential to help you applying your potential to help you rise to the next level and the next level. Is it clear? So they have to be both. Uh, shall I stop? Is it too much for you? Okay. So he said, Bo says, because of what you, the story related to me, Ah, I got it. I understand now the importance of potential and function. There, there are, uh, I see that, I see that the uh, Mazu, he has both, I can see both Mazu, great uh, uh, grandmaster Mazu's potential and function. His potential to understand you, to teach you, and how he taught you. So far, so good. And then he says, but I do not know Mazu. And if I were to succeed him, 
If I were his successor, that would bring harm to my descendants. Descendants here is an English term for my sons and my grandsons. So you see, the teacher here, he's not thinking about the great teachers like Huang Bo. Uh, he's not thinking only of his direct disciples, but also how his teaching will affect his disciples and his disciples' disciples. That's how great teachers think. And I feel, and this is a, this is a criticism of my Chinese master, Master Xuanhua. I saw how he failed to prepare the third generation. Okay? Because I see the third generation being, uh, being, uh, in no man's land. Okay? Huang Bo says, I will not do that. I will, I will, I will, you know, I will not do anything that will bring harm, will stop the progress of my disciples, nor my grand disciples. So I cannot be Ma Zhu's successor. Because that would be harm, bring harm to my disciples and my grand disciples. Meaning and and so on and so on, but you can see you can see from his perspective as he's alive, he can see what's happening to his disciples and what's happening to his grand disciples. Like Master Wei Shan could see what happened to Yang Shan, his disciples, and then his and Yang Shan disciples. So far, so good. Hmm. Bai Chang said. So it is, so it is. Okay, so this is how the Chan Master says, so it is, you are right, so it is, uh, I think so too. You are correct, the first so it is, you are correct. Number two, uh, I feel the same way. I think the same way. Okay? And Bai Chang said, no. When the student has the same view as a master's, he has have, master's virtue. And I struggle for this for, for a while. What was I struggling about? I apologize, I go a little bit faster than normal. I usually give you more time to interchange for you to sink in and talk and make a fool of yourselves and so forth. And I chuckle at myself internally and say, oh God, why am I doing this with these people? But anyway, so today I don't have a lot of time, so I save you a lot of grief, okay? Um, so the question I have, why half? I ask you very quickly, why half? Why not a quarter? Well, not three quarters. Reasonable? The Chan masters, they are extremely precise. When they say half, it's half. It's not a quarter, it's not three quarters. It's not 98%, it's not 45%, it's half. Why? Anyone cares to make a comment? Anyone still there? is exactly half. I thought about it and said, exactly. It's really, really half. All right? Why? I can't tell you. <laughs> you don't get anything so far, so it doesn't matter if I tell you or not, right? <laughs> Actually, when you get there, one of these days, when you guys up there and when I retired, and, and then you can come to me like the Godfather. You remember that movie, The Godfather, where the big Godfather, original Godfather, in one of those uh, sequels, okay, uh, he was retired and he was uh, ten tending to his uh, his uh, his uh, little garden, you know, in the sun, and he would, you know, wipe his uh, his sweat off. You know, anyone watches uh, movies at all in uh, over there? 
Go and check the Godfather. It's a terrific series. Okay, it has so profound. It has even Chan meanings. Now I'm telling you. So, so the the original Godfather was, in, and, then, and then the son, the next Godfather, uh, Michael Corleone, came visit him and say, "Hi, hey, Dad, what's happening?" He said, "Oh, it's not growing very well. It's so hard. I don't like what I'm doing." And then, and then, and then. Uh, and then he says, uh, he says, Dad, I need to ask you a question. And um, the godfather, the, the old godfather says, da, 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 da. So, so that's what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is that after I retired, you can come and see me and say, Hey, Master, why was it half? Deal? If you can find me. You're entitled to ask why half, all right? If not, I will write it in my will, half because. <laughs> okay, it's fascinating to me. I say, why half? Exactly half. That's what's fascinating about Chan teaching. Okay, next, 16. Uh, when the student's view surpasses the master's view, then he can carry the teaching burden. You have views that surpass your masters, and Bo bowed. Bo bowed. Okay, he says, "Wow," meaning Bo recognizes his master. Okay, he recognized Mazu. You see, the great teachers. Why they're great? Because they really have wisdom. Okay, in a Chan world, you cannot BS. You can BS is for to low level people. You can calm them and uh, make them give you a lot of money and so forth, adore you and so, and so forth. Uh, but at their level, they recognize each other. You can't fake it. Okay, so in other words, you want to make the level. You cannot fake it at any level at all. Is it clear? You can let others scam you, you can get scammed, but you're not supposed to scam anyone at all. You're not supposed to cheat anyone at all if you are a pure Chan practitioner. Does it help? Okay, that's why Bo, Bo bowed. Hmm. Later, Wei Shan asked Yang Shan, What's the meaning of the story by Chang's visiting Mazu and being rendered deaf for three days? Yang Shang said that demonstrated great potential and great function. Yang Shang got it immediately. Yang Shang's incredible. Okay? Uh, but in my defense, he's Chinese. I'm not Chinese, so I have struggled with the language. Wei Shan asked, Ma Zhu produced 84 good no advisors. Okay, uh, 84 Shan Zhu Shi, good no advisors. Hmm. How many uh, attain, not achieve, attain? The is attain. Okay, the Chinese are very precise. You cannot, you don't want to be too liberal in your translation. The here is to attain to realize great potential. How many, sorry, I dropped the many. How many attain great function? Yang Shan, the people replied, Bai Chang attain great potential, and Huang Bo attain great function. The rest were just uh, proclaiming the way teachers or competent teachers. These, the, rest, uh, the rest are knowledgeable, uh, competent teachers, but they're regurgitating the teachings. Okay? They said, oh, Master Mazu said so and so, Master Mazu said so and so, I remember Mazu said so and so and so, so they are regurgitating what Mazu said. 
his 84 disciples, eminent disciples, they regurgitated. They didn't add anything at all. All right? So Wei Shang said, so it is, so it is. Applause sign. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Go ahead, Chiu Hong. Thank you, Master. In that vein, can we say that uh, um, uh, the fifth patriarch has uh, more than uh, has his full virtue in doing the sixth patriarch? No, not at all. Not at all, because the sixth patriarch was on his own. The fifth patriarch. Uh, was only the bridge. All right? Number one. Number two, the fifth patriarch disciples are very, very low level. Therefore, the fifth patriarch did not know how to teach. Ma Zhu uh, knew how to teach. That's why he brought all those disciples, thousands of students, he got 84 of them to be good no advisors. He produced many, many competent teachers that help proliferate Chan later. Okay, make Chan very, very uh, strong in China. So he, he needed the volume, 84 volume, 84 good no advisors. Yes, they're not great teachers, but they understand the Dharma. Okay. They, they understand how to teach. Fifth Patriarch didn't have any eminent disciples that he trained. Sixth Patriarch was taught by, by the Fifth Patriarch for a very short duration. He went on his own, developed his own wisdom. And it, that wisdom surpassed Fifth Patriarch's wisdom. If you look at Fifth Patriarch disciples, you can tell that Sixth Patriarch disciples were most likely higher than fifth patriarch. Okay, so the sixth patriarch is an odd case. All right, so uh, let me give you some tips, some, some clues for you. Okay, number one. Bai Chang visited Ma Zhu again, so they separated, right? Ma Zhu did his own thing, Bai Chang went on his own, okay, and taught on his own, did his own things. Bai Chang was one of the uh, good no advisors for Ma Zhu's, okay? okay? So he went back to pay him a visit, okay? What did he do? He didn't say, oh, you have your temple, I also have my temple. I also, you know, I'm inventing this, uh, this uh, Chan monastery system. So I'm also a, accomplished a lot. I probably have as many disciples as you. My temple is probably bigger than yours. Okay? No. What did he do? He came back and he stood by Ma Zhu, his teacher, to serve him. I've seen too many, uh, too many. Uh, uh, monks and nuns as well, lay people, they learn from the teacher, they came back, say, hey, you and I are equal now. You're a teacher, I'm a teacher too. You have a, your, your accomplishment, I have my accomplishments too. I want you to understand the, the mindset of these great people with great wisdom. He came back and says, you are still my teacher. No man who I am, you are still my great teacher. So he stood by to serve him. Unless you're respectful, okay, you will not be taught. Remember that. Do not make that mistake. Doesn't matter how rich you are, how powerful you are, how smart you are, how successful you are, unless you're respectful, you will not be taught. Go ahead, conk. Uh, master, do you hear me, Master? Yes. Um, I have a question about um, um, I think Huang Ba, Huang Ba said Huang that Ho. the 
Yeah. Quang, yeah. Yeah. Quang Bo, he, he said that uh, he cannot uh, do the work of the the great master because he he didn't know much so well. But he he said he know about his potential and his uh, function. Why he said he didn't know much so well. Well, he meant by that. I, I let me get to that. Well, he meant by that is that. Uh, he may recognize uh, Wang, uh, he may recognize Ma Zhu, he may recognize Bai Chang, but it doesn't mean his level is the same. Yes, Master. Okay, so Zhu, remember, uh, uh, at that level, Ma Zhu taught Bai Chang, he doesn't need to use words anymore. Okay? Uh, so he looked at it, okay, and this is the teaching of their advanced level. They don't need to use words, okay? It's, so, it's called wordless teaching at that level. And Bai Chang got the, the lesson, but he says, but you know, in a humor, he says, uh, but uh, teacher, uh, this is function. The whisk is just uh, a use, a function. Uh, we... Chan people are about substance, about potential. We're not supposed to do function, okay? It's not be attached to function. But this, uh, this, uh, understand that this is, uh, this is a, a, uh, a, uh, what is it? A, um, uh, a hu jiu, xu chao, okay? It's just like made a, 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 a false comment to provoke Ma, ma Zhu only. Okay? Yeah. Go ahead, Burton. Uh, okay, hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, so I'd like to ask a question about the, 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 um, uh, the connection between Buddhism and science. Yes. What's the connection? So is there any connection between Buddhism and science? What exactly? What connection are you talking about? Like anything. How do scientists make their discoveries? With their mm, minds? By science research or something that's with the minds enough. with the minds yes yes okay right. so for these scientists they make the discovery with their minds okay so uh, look at it this way you have a scientist uh, a nobel laureate okay who produce uh, some significant results and he continued to do so right Compare the scientist to someone who can be, um, can concentrate uh, twice as long, meaning he has twice the amount of stamina. He has, uh, the mind is twice as fast. Okay, so you have the same guy, okay, this Nobel laureate, okay, uh, that his potential is so much. And you have another scientist who practices Chan, practices Chan, and his potential is twice the potential, four times the potential, eight times the potential. So what are the chances that this Chan, the scientist who practices Chan, will be able to continue to produce more results than the original, than the first scientist? That's a relationship. A relationship of Chan with anything, whether you're a scientist or a businessman or a, uh, a woman, uh, a housewife, is that uh, your level of samadhi, your level of wisdom. All right?
Jeez. Does it help? So, yes, but I have an, another question about this for the further. Yes. So why don't they become a monk to practice the Buddhist things, and why they become scientists? Why don't you become a monk? Uh, we don't want you as a monk. <laughs> What makes you think we want you as a monk? Not everyone can no, no, be no, a no, monk. No. It's, I, what, my, my, my question is, why these scientists, they, 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 they become scientists instead of monk? Because that's what they know. In my prior life, before I was a monk, I wanted to be a businessman. I want to be an executive, because that's my life's goal. I make money and have power and have fun. Okay? Because that's all I knew. No one told me, unlike you, that uh, I could have this thing called Chan that I could uh, use to make myself smarter, make myself, my mind stronger, make myself a better person. More patient, kinder, more generous. Huh? So you don't need to be a monk. You can be anyone. Chan is for everyone. We, we don't have the conditions to, I cannot be who you are. Okay? I can, uh, you, you cannot be what I do. You can be the man, the kind, of, the kind of person that can do the things I do. So we all have our different conditions. That's all. Okay? So it's called, so the Chan here, uh, we talk about today, we talk about uh, potential. Chan here, uh, uh, build your potential, okay? Uh, make, makes your potential increase. And you yourself, as I said, choose to be a scientist, you choose to be a monk, you choose to be a doctor, you could choose to be whatever you want to choose to be. That's function. All right? But the worldly knowledge does not know how to increase your potential. Your schooling, your university, your education increases your knowledge, does not increase your potential from Buddhist perspective. Okay? So your education the, uh, increases your functionality your functions does not increase your potential. So that's why you want both, preferably. You want to put aside some time, invest some time to work on your potential. And then, uh, because if you increase your potential, then naturally everything you do will be from your own potential, your own capacity. Okay? So that's why yes. if you build your potential, whatever you choose to do, you will become a pillar in your society, in your world. Yes. All right. Good question. Okay, so, um, so this meditation is the fastest way to increase my potential. Am I right? Yes. It's the most powerful way to increase your yes. potential. Okay. It's not That's words. All. It's not words. It's a track record. Okay? I look at the Chinese system and they have a ter terrific track record of producing Chan masters and, and tremendous uh, uh, lay people. And we're carrying that now on to the U.S. where we want to share that with the 21st century with everyone, okay? Now keep it only for the Chinese. Yes, thank you. Okay, thanks for your question, very good. Okay, so Bai uh, Chang, uh, you know, uh, so they, there is a Chan uh, interchange between Bai uh, Chang and Ma Zhu, okay? That's how they, they they talk to each other, that's how they related to each other. They never waste time, by the way. Okay? 
Uh, don't you think that they came and said, Oh, Master, I'm so grateful to you. I, you know, I owe you, you know, you know, and so forth. No. Not every single second is wasted between these great beings. Okay? Mm. And so he says, If you, you, know, you understand me, Matu says, but how do you teach this to the people who are not at our level? Because you have to open your lips. Okay? What would you say then? And Bai Chang says, I don't need to say anything. Yeah. And, um, and that, that's how they, 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 uh, they confirmed each other. They understood each other. And so, shouted a great might, making Bai Chang deaf for three days. Let me give you a tip. It only happens because Ma Zhu's Kung Fu is higher than Bai Chang. There's a proof right there, Ma Zhu level is still higher than Bai Chang. Okay? Because if, if, the, if the Kung Fu is the same, Bai Chang would not be there for three days. It's impossible. Okay? Things that the Chinese don't tell their disciples through these stories, you know. Okay? Uh, so one day Bai Chang related the story to his disciple, meaning that one day Bai Chang said, Wow, among you there is some good potential. What meaning? Huang Bo, among others. Can you see that? Huang Bo, Wei Shan. That's why Bai Chang says, Wow, I need to tell you about what happened between me and my teacher. Huh? It's a compliment. They brought it up. Yeah, cool. Uh, and suddenly, I couldn't be here for three, 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 three days. And to Wei Shan, to Huang Bo, they immediately understood that Ma Zhu is higher than Bai Chang. Understand? So that's why uh, Huang Bo they say, they say, Wow, how could anyone? I cannot do it with my, my master. Huang Bo said, I cannot make him deaf for three days. That's why he stuck his tongue out. Wow, someone that powerful? Really? You got that? Now they're laughing. They, 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 they have a, they're smiling. These people are so you know, impossible. You have to wait. I have to go over time. It's past 7 o'clock here in, in, in California time for you to smile and, 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 and encourage me. <sighs> okay? So that's why he stuck his tongue out. I said, wow. That's incredible. How can anyone, you know, I thought my master is incredible already, but Mazu, I couldn't even see him. That's someone else, something else. Okay? That's why I stuck his tongue out. Who on earth, on this earth, can make Bai Chang deaf for three days? That's not possible. That's incredible Kung Fu. Okay? Uh, so Bai Chang says, uh, wow, you appreciate it. You, th you think you should be a uh, master successor in the future? Because you can see, you understand me, understand you. Shouldn't you be? So the Bai Chang immediately tested uh, uh, Huang Po. You see that? Very fast. Yeah. Huang Po says, of course not. What are you talking about? What kind of nonsense is this? Yeah. Uh, because the master said today, I can see Mazu has both great potential and great function. Okay, meaning Mazu potential is higher and, and he used and is chose to demonstrate by shouting at Bai Chang and make him deaf for three days. See? Got that? Hmm. Uh, but I do not know Mazu. I never met him. If I were to succeed him, be his successor, that would bring harm to my descendants. Okay, he says, I'm not good enough, forget it. Okay, I'd rather, you know, my, my students uh, know it's me, and they should know that my teaching is my teaching, and, and I'm never, I'm never dreamed to be my successor. If they, they learn from me, and when they are tired of it, they should go back and learn from Mazu. Is that clear? You don't ever pretend. That I'm, uh, I'm, you know, look at all of you, I'm the best there is, therefore I should be Mazu's successor. No, that's not Huang Po thinks. He says, I'm very good, 
I can teach my disciples, but I will never tell them I'm his successor because when they feel that they want someone better than me, go back to Mazu, go back to Bai Chang. Is that clear? These beings are something else. They're not there, you know, they're trying to get famous or, you know, hey, or keep their disciples and don't you dare go to the other temple because, you know, I, you know, and so forth. No, he says, no, I'm not qualified. I'm not good enough. I don't dare ever dream to be his successor. Never. Because you remember, he says, I can see, I can understand Mazu's potential and functioning. Okay? Yeah, so that's why uh, Bai Chang immediately tested to Huang Po. He said, you should be his successor then. You can see him. You should be his successor. So Bai Chang says, so it is, so it is. When you have the same view of the masters, the master's virtue is halved, meaning his job is only half done. <laughs> i give you just one more tip today. Okay? The rest, you have to come and look for me when I tend to my garden, like the godfather. Okay? When the student's view surpasses the master's, then he can carry the teaching burden. You have views that surpass your master's. And so Huang Bo bowed. Okay, yeah. May have views, but it does not necessarily have the Kung Fu. Okay, you see? It's how polite, how appropriate is to talk to your master and show respect and show deference. Later, Wei Shan asked Yang Shan, what's the meaning of the story of that story? Yang Shan said, great potential, great function. Okay, what about? Uh, uh, so Wei Shan asked, uh, Tell me more. Mazu has 84 great students. How many attain great potential? How many attain great function? So uh, Wei Shan says, okay, then you talk about his great potential, great function, then did he pass it on to his disciples? Uh, Yang said, Bai Chang attained great potential, Huang Bo attained great function. Okay. Huang Bo, by the way, is known to use a lot of expedients that later Lin Ji, his disciples, copied some of it and founded Lin Ji school. So basically Lin Ji stole, took a subset of Huang Bo's teaching to found the Lin Ji school, meaning that uh, Lin Ji, Chan Master Lin Ji, uh, could not understand the rest of Huang Bo's uh, teaching. Because Huang Bo is way too sophisticated. His, his great function is way much more than Lin Ji can understand, could understand. Is that clear? That's why it's one more confirmation for me that Lin Ji is actually a subset of the previous generation's wisdom. The rest of uh, the, the other 82 great, uh, great disciples are just proclaiming the way teachers, meaning that you still need those. You don't, you know, you know, if you have two great teachers of the caliber of Bai Chang and Huang Po, that's incredible already. Okay? And that's more than you need. That's more than our world deserves at the same time. Okay? Now, usually, one, uh, one has to die before the other shows up. And between, usually, is a gap in between. Okay? Uh, and so, it says, uh, only two great teachers, the, 80, the other 82 teachers are just, uh, you know, just uh, parakeets. They have nothing more to add. But even so, uh, they are such great, eminent teachers. They, can, they did a lot of uh, good for the Chan school, for a lot of people. Right? And Wei said, so it is, so it is. Final questions. 
See? We witnessing tonight, you just witnessed tonight how four great minds in the Chan world, Chinese Chan world, how they operated. I hope someday you understand what it's about as well. Okay? Thank you, everyone. I'm sorry that it's uh, taking so long. See you next time.